a 61 Thunderbird hardtop, and this $20,000 Westinghouse Total Electric Vacation Home. Second prize, a bundle of money, $10,000 cold cash. 23rd prizes, each one a 61 Falcon two-door sedan. And 1,000 fourth prizes, famous Argus movie cameras. To be eligible for the big drawing, just fill in the missing word in the L&M jingle. Complete rules on how to enter in L&M magazine advertisements or where L&Ms are sold. Enter L&M's $169,000 sweepstakes now. Now, there's a chance to win a bundle. But win or not, give yourself the big prize in smoking. The good tobacco taste of l and It can't be beat, friends. So unlock some flavor. Reach for the greatest l and I didn't know about that extra pot you had there. Right? <laughs> I'll read you something later that said about the band, which is a riot. <laughs> Another thing, I told you about the guy that says you're on the air. Well, any of you people who have visited a television show know about the guy at the end of the show that goes like this to tell you, you know, that there's no time left and to get off. Last week, the guy used a real knife. <laughs> Now, another funny thing about putting on a flop show. <laughs> and I wish I wasn't an expert in all these things. <laughs> but after the show is over, you usually stand there. You know, you're the star, and they run up to you, and they say, Oh, Gleason, you were gorgeous. Oh, you were right. I died laughing. <laughs> Last week, nothing. <laughs> I'm standing there alone. <laughs> like I had eczema from head to foot. It was <laughs> so after a little while of standing around and nobody saying anything, I started to ask some questions. So I walked up to one of the stage hands and I said, uh, well, Charlie, how'd you like the show? <laughs> he said, boy, you look thin on a monitor. <laughs> this is it, folks, when they say that. Another guy said uh, to me, he said, you know, the curtain didn't stick once like it did this afternoon. <laughs> and I went up to another guy and he says, we got off the air right on time. <laughs> right on time. And the only compliment I received is a guy walked up and he said, the commercials were great. <laughs> and that was wrong because another guy said they were too short. <laughs> But these are the things that happen. Uh, oh, right after the show, my associate, Jack Philbin, came up to me. And he said, uh, I, don't know if, I don't know what to think of this. There's a guy on the phone that wants to sponsor a hunk of this show. And after I heard these things, like you're thin on a monitor and everything, I said, uh, well, he must be a nut or something. He says, no, he sounds sincere. So I went to the phone. I says, hello. He says, this place. And I said, yep, pal, who is this? He says, I'd like to sponsor a little piece of the show. I said, well, what product do you manufacture? He says, Brand X. Ah! <laughs> this, is, this is the truth. Now, after a show, after a show, especially like the one we did last week, you want to get out and get somewhere. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> And if you have an armed guard, that's good, too, you know, but you want to get out. So we all went to a restaurant, my associates and people connected with the show, and uh, a restaurant you would ordinarily go to eat in, but we didn't. <laughs> we, I ordered a roast double scotch and somebody else a, a boiled vodka. And after we had about 30 or 50 of these real steaks, <laughs> We began to think it over. And with the glow of the booze, the show got better, you know. <laughs> One guy says, you gotta admit it was a cold night. <laughs> Another guy says, yeah. And he says, don't forget, a week ago, it was Friday the 13th. <laughs> oh, beautiful, excuse me. Then some guy said, 
Look, he said, let's face it, we were following a tough show, the inaugural. <laughs> yeah, that's on all day with the marching and everything. He said, you can't follow that. I said, you know, come to think of it, you're right. I said, they had a misfortune during the inaugural. I said, as Cardinal Cushing was making the invocation, the lectern started to smoke. Remember it went on fire? I said, that was their misfortune. I said, it should happen to us that we had a misfortune where everything burned up. <laughs> and we could have also used a couple of card Cardinal Cushing's bread. <laughs> but I knew that we were finished because when I went home to the hotel, I opened the window to look out and see if it was still snowing. And they had the nets up. <laughs> Before we go on with this, and before we continue any further, let's pause for a moment for a few words from Dennis James about one of Kellogg's fine breakfast foods. Hi, this is Dennis James. I have here a delicious breakfast of particular interest to anybody watching his weight. Here we are, the new Special K breakfast, planned by dietitians to give you the complete protein you need first thing in the morning, but only 240 calories. Now this is the combination Kellogg's Special K with skim milk makes a high protein, low calorie breakfast possible. See, an ounce of Special K with four ounces of skim milk supplies the kind of protein that keeps you going strong right up to lunchtime. A good start on your day's protein requirement too. Now here is the new Special K breakfast with the Special K and skim milk. You can have a teaspoon of sugar, a four ounce glass of orange or tomato juice or half a grapefruit, and either black coffee or tea. And there you have it. Delicious, quick, substantial breakfast with only 240 calories. So how about it? Why don't you give the new Special K breakfast a try, okay? Okay. <laughs> You know, ladies and gentlemen, the reason I can come out and joke about this kind of a thing is because uh, I know that you can't kid the public. And on top of that, I've been in show business a long time, and this isn't my first flop. I got to tell you about the world's greatest flop that I was in. This uh, contains all the dreams of an actor and all of the things you, you think are going to be wonderful that happen to you. And it starts like this. I was working at a joint called the 18 Club on 52nd Street. The same time I was doubling at another club in Queens called the Queens Terrace. And that was a club you had to fight pretty good to work there as a master of ceremonies. But anyway, I went on for the first show at the 18 Club and Jack Warner was in the audience of Warner Brothers Studios and I didn't know this. And I left immediately because I had to get in the car and rush to Queens to do the second show. Now, I had found out this later, that Warner had gone up to Freddie Lamb, who was the guy that was running the 18 Club, a fine guy, and who was my manager, because he had bought me a tuxedo. <laughs> <laughs> and if you think that wasn't a nice gesture, you should have seen me in those days. Well, anyway, he went up to Freddie Lamb, he said, this kid here is a riot, we gotta have him, we're starting a picture in two weeks, and he's gotta be out there. Freddie Lamb says, all right. He says, but let's not rush about this thing. Now, what do you want to give the kid? And uh, Jack Warner said, $85 a week. He says, right, you got him. <laughs> now, <laughs> anyway, I come back to the 18 Club, and Freddie Lamb says, well, pal, you're in pictures. And he told me the story. Well, I was never more thrilled in my life. You know, I was a, a young kid, a ham bone of all times, with a lot of guts and very little talent. And this, to me, was the tops of everything. So a week later, they see me down to the train. We're all going pretty good. And Freddie Lamb gives me $150 spending money to last me for the trip and the few days that I have to wait until my first paycheck comes. Well, I get in the train and I'm dreaming. Oh, oh, Clark Gable, move over. <laughs> we finally get to Chicago. And if you know anything about the trains that go to Chicago, at, you arrive in Chicago 9 o'clock in the morning, and the train lays over there till about 4 in the afternoon, so you have to go somewhere. So I went to Enrici's restaurant, where you have coffee, and I met the guys. Red Skelton was there, Danny Thomas, 
they were all working in town, and I got talking to them. Then we went and had a couple of drinks. Then I called up the train to see if there was a train leaving tomorrow that I could get on. And they said yes. And I watched their shows at night. We went to a gambling joint, and I lost all the money. Now, I got on the train, and after paying the, the uh, porter for my bags, I had exactly $4.25 left and two days on this train to California. Now the guy is going through the train with the bell, bing bong, bing bong. <laughs> Call for lunch. <laughs> I'm not worried about the lunch. I'm as dry as toast, you know. <laughs> so I figured there's something I have to do so I don't starve to death. And I got off the train at the first stop and I bought a whole box of baby roots. <laughs> oh, little candies. For two days, I ate baby roots with the bing bong bing. <laughs> when I got off the train, I was loaded with pimples and despair. <laughs> the guy that was at the train to meet me said to me, what studio do you want to go to? I said, the Brown Derby restaurant. <laughs> anyway, well, I'll have to tell you the end of the, uh, the story right after our next commercial. Now, as I told you, tonight our show is brought to you by L&M. And when I ask you to try my cigarette, L&M, I ask you to try them for only one reason, taste. Really good tobacco taste that gives you pleasure. And is there anything better than pleasure in a cigarette? Believe me, I've tried all brands. And if I had my cigarettes made to order, I'd still settle for L&M. And I think you will too. So unlock some flavor, friends. Reach for an L&M. Now... Now, before finishing the story, could I have another cup of coffee, please? <laughs> this is the finish. The sole survivor. <laughs> We had four of these when we were going good last week. <laughs> anyway, I made the picture. It was called Navy Blues. And it was a pretty good picture. Jack Daly were in it, uh, was in it. Uh, Jack Oakey, Martha Ray, Ann Sheridan, Jack Carson. They were all splendid. But I had the kind of a part, like if there were a big group of sailors and they said, let's get on a boat, I'd say, yeah, let's get on a boat. And we all run on. Then if they said, let's get off the boat, I'd say, yeah, let's get off the boat. We'd all run off. <laughs> well, we did this picture, and I couldn't wait till it came out. And it came out and played at the Warner Brothers Theater on Hollywood Boulevard, and I went to see it. And I came out, and I was pretty dejected. And I called up Jack Haley, who was a good friend of mine then and still is. And I said, Jack, I just saw the picture. He says, well, how were you in it? I said, I looked like somebody watching the picture being made. <laughs> Now, that's not such a funny story, but believe me, it really hurt here. But I have learned through just such... Uh, are you saying 30 till we're finished or what? Yeah? Well, let me tell you something. This isn't uh, a requiem for a heavyweight. <laughs> I'm coming back next week. I don't know what we're gonna do. But take my word for it. Tune in on the next chapter, because this might be the greatest soapless opera you've ever seen. <laughs> I would like to close, I would like to close with this little poem. If I am in an easy chair with not a problem, not a care, should some dear faithful friend appear and tell me of a great idea, a TV show that seems a beaut, <laughs> I'll smack him right in the snoot. Ah! <laughs>